Hello there, I'm Miss Benita, and I teach and live in Seattle, Washington. If you're just joining us for the first time, welcome. Like you, I'm at home right now. I'm at home with my two cats, Ruby and Claude. They are studying their ecosystem. And the more they study their ecosystem, the more questions they have. Well, the more we study our ecosystem, the more questions we have. And the more questions we have, the more we learn about it. Let's continue. This unit is called Ecosystems Restoration, and we're building up our uh, knowledge about this unit in order to help us answer the question, how do organisms in an ecosystem get the matter and energy they need to grow and thrive? If you have the packet, you can use, you can follow along uh, in pages five through 12. And if you do not have the packet, any piece of paper that you have at your home will do. Let's review. In the last video lesson, we learned that in an ecosystem with healthy conditions, there are enough food molecules to turn into body molecules. We expanded our thinking about an ecosystem as a community of organisms working together in its environment. And from the reading, we learned a food web shows many different ways that organisms get molecules. So this is lesson seven in chapter one of the unit. The purpose of today's video is to build up the evidence we have gathered and suggest an action plan to the Natural Resources Rescue Group. We will be using some writing and using evidence cards you can cut out from the packet. There will also be opportunities to involve your family in the discussions. This is the last lesson in chapter one. There are four activities in today's video. We're gonna start with the importance of plants. Let's start with the question, why are plants important? Why are they important to us? Why are they important to our ecosystem? This is a great question for you to ask a family member. Why are plants important to them? Back in the book, we looked at page 17 and we study the Everglades Swamp Food Web. You can follow along in your packet pages five through six. We have a few questions to ask about this food web that you can record your answers. In this food web, what got its food from what? Remember to follow the arrows. In real ecosystems, food webs are very complex. Food webs help us understand how molecules flow through an ecosystem. We can use food webs to think about changes in an ecosystem. What do you think would happen to this food web if there were no carp or frogs? What do you think would happen to this food web if there were no bladderwort plants or marsh grass. Based on the food web, let's share our new ideas about our question. Where do food molecules in the ecosystem come from? From one organism to another? Food molecules flow through the food web? and food molecules in an ecosystem start with plants. This is a key concept. Food molecules in an ecosystem can always be traced back to plants. Write that one down, that's important. Thinking about what we read in Matter Makes It All Up, what do we know about food webs? Let's make sure we know what a food web is. Right? A food web is a diagram that shows what eats what in an ecosystem. And while we're looking at words, let's look, take a look at the word data or data. We've been using lots of data 
for this chapter. Data is observations or measurements recorded in an investigation. In lesson two, we took a look at several data tables. Let's review this one again. This one shows the Jaguars in three-toed sloths, their average weight in the project area, and their average weight in the healthy rainforest. And we notice that the Jaguars and the sloths in the project area did not weigh as much as the ones in the healthy rainforest. This diagram shows the elements of a scientific argument. It shows how the data and scientific ideas together can be used as evidence in support of the claim. All right, now we're on to activity two where we're going to be looking at more of our evidence together. We will make an argument to answer this question. Why aren't the jaguars and sloths growing and thriving in the project area? Another vocabulary word, this is a review. I wanna make sure that we're thinking about argument in the scientific way. Here, an argument is not a disagreement that we have together. And it certainly isn't fighting about ideas either. An argument is the use of evidence to say why one idea is the best. Here is a proposed answer to our question. Our claim, the jaguars and sloths aren't growing and thriving because there are not enough plants in the project area. All right, let's turn to page seven in the packet. We will use a routine called evidence talk to talk about the evidence for this claim. If we were in a classroom, we would be using the routine evidence circles, but we're at home, so we're going to talk through this. Let's read the directions together. Read the question and the claim below. Read each evidence card carefully. You may want to take turns reading the cards aloud to a family member. Write important ideas below. Talk about the evidence that supports the claim. Try to connect the related data and scientific ideas together. See if you and a family member can come to an agreement on whether the claim is supported by evidence. This is the heavy lifting work that scientists do all the time. If there is no disagreement, discuss the reasons why you still disagree. Now, our question is, why aren't the jaguars and sloths growing and thriving? We've made a claim that there are not enough plants in the project area. Let's take a look at our evidence cards. I'd like you to review them in page eight of the packet. Make sure each family member gets to read all five of the cards. All right, this is something I want you to keep in mind. This shows part of a food web in our rainforest ecosystem. Scientists think about how one part of a system can affect the other parts. This is a tool that you can use in, packet, in the packet page 11. You can use scientific language to help you discuss the evidence cards together. These are super helpful. I think because this idea is important because I agree, I disagree, and questions you can ask during the discussion. This is super helpful in helping you hear what each other are saying about the evidence cards. Not who's saying it, but what's being said. Talk about which evidence supports the claim and how you could think how you could link data and ideas to make a strong argument. Go ahead and pause the video and look through the cards. What cards were strong evidence for the claim? Did you find it difficult to decide? I certainly did. The jaguars and, and sloths aren't growing and thriving because there are not enough plants in the project area. I wanted to review our claim one more time. Here it is again. 
And I want us to think about the cards in this way. How, are the, how do we connect the related data and scientific ideas together? And do we agree on whether the claim is supported by the evidence on the cards? Let's take a look. Evidence card one is from a book. All parts of an ecosystem, the soil, rocks, animals, plants, and everything else are made of matter. Here we have data and scientific ideas that are put together because everything is made up of matter. Now, do we agree that this information supports our claim? Let's see. What about evidence card two from the Ecosystem Restoration Sim? When animals eat, the molecules from food turn into the animal's body matter. Here again, we do see data and scientific ideas together. And I'm beginning to see that there's a connection to the, the claim because we need, animals need to eat. And that's how the jaguars and sloths are going to thrive. They need that body matter. Evidence card three shows that there are fewer jaguars in our project area than the healthy rainforests. Here we have our data connecting these ideas together. And this is a reason why the jaguars, or this is showing that the jaguars aren't growing and thriving. But can we use this in our argument? Let's look at evidence card four. There are fewer sloths in the project area. That means that there are fewer sloths for the jaguars to eat. Here again, we do have related data and we do see that this attaches to our claim because without the sloths, the jaguars aren't thriving. And what is needed here? Let's take a look at this, the Cecropia trees. There are fewer Cecropia trees in the project area. That means that there are fewer Cecropia trees for the sloths to eat. And again, these ideas are weaving together the data and what we know. And it also helps support our claim because we have fewer in the project area. And when there are fewer, then there's not enough food matter for the sloths. If there's not enough food matter for the sloths, the jaguars can't thrive. All right, we're going to on to activity three and we're going to write a scientific argument. Remember, the best idea needs to be moved forward. The purpose of a scientific argument is to convince people that a certain claim is the best claim. A convincing argument is well supported with evidence. Let's take a look at what is a scientific argument. It answers a question with a claim about the natural world. It includes evidence to support the claim. Evidence can be data from the project area, ideas from investigations, ideas from books. It connects the evidence to the claim by linking different pieces of evidence together to show how they support the claim. Page 11 of your packet gives you some great sentence starters to get you started on talking about your scientific argument and writing your scientific argument. Here's our claim again. And we're looking at the connection of this food web. Evidence card five showed us that with fewer Cecropia trees, we have fewer sloths, which causes fewer jaguars. Evidence four gave us this information and evidence card two helped us to think about the animal's body matter and how uh, the food molecules are turned into body matter. And evidence card three showed us that there are fewer jaguars. What about evidence card one? Can we use it in the mix? That's up to you. And if you're working with a family member, 
it is all up to you how you use these cards. Remember, the best argument proposes the best use of the evidence. So be thinking about how you want to use these cards to formulate your argument. All right, let's get to page, let's now look at page 10 in our packet. We're gonna write this argument. We're gonna to refer to our evidence cards and use your notes. Remember, we need to collect, connect the evidence to the claim. Let's take a look here. Write a scientific argument that answers the question below. Include scientific ideas about what happened to the organisms in the molecules. Your audience is natural resource rescue. The question, why aren't the jaguars and sloths growing and thriving? The jaguars and sloths aren't growing and thriving because there are not enough plants in the project area. Go ahead and pause the video and work on the sheet. Welcome back. It's our last activity in this video. We're going to create an action step to help restore this rainforest ecosystem. Let's take a look at what we've accomplished so far. Natural Resource Rescue, its project goal was a restoration of the project area. Our tasks were to investigate why the animals aren't growing and thriving in the project area. We did that. Write an argument that includes a claim that answers a question. We did that. And now we're on the step where we're going to suggest an action step to improve the health of the animals in the ecosystem. Let's pause for a minute and take a look at this vocabulary word, restoration. The process of returning something to its original condition by fixing or repairing it. We took a look at what happened 10 years ago when the ranchers cleared the land for their cattle to graze. And then today we planted plants to in an attempt to restore the area. That's restoration. We'll make a restoration plan for how to help the rainforest ecosystem recover. I want you to use page 12 of your packet. And if you don't have a page 12 of your packet, you can just see that it's a drawing space and more writing. We'll make a restoration plan for how to help the rainforest ecosystem recover. What are some actions natural resource rescue could take to help the animals grow and thrive? Why will these action steps help? Draw your ideas before you write and label them. It helps. I want you to pause the video and do some brainstorming. What action steps could we suggest to the natural resources rescue? All right, let's get started. I'm gonna write the purpose here. In order to help the animals in the project area grow and thrive, we recommend, let's see what's been recommended. So some of the actions that have been recommended are raising money for the group, right? Purchasing more equipment for the group to use to help restore the area. Some of you said that we need to plant more plants because we have learned that that is where food matter flows from. Some of you also suggested that we need to collect more data and there's always a possibility of protecting the area more. That might help as well. Let's recommend one action step. Which action step that we brainstorm might best help the animals grow and thrive? Plant more plants? We can go with that. Also, 
we can continue to collect data once we plant more plants. Why will the action step we choose help the animals to grow and thrive? Let's take a look. Let's add some sentences explaining why. Remember that page 11? Why don't you use some of those? Go ahead and pause the video and work on the why of our explanation. All right, welcome back. This is what we have. In order to help the animals in the project area grow and thrive, we recommend planting more rainforest plants. We should plant different kinds so that the sloths have more to eat. We know plants are the food matter sloths need to grow and thrive. If the sloths are healthy, then they are healthy food matter for the jaguars in the rainforest. We know from what we read that all matter is made of molecules. These molecules make up the food animals eat and animals use these molecules to build and repair their bodies. We also learned that food webs begin with plants. So let's help natural resources rescue plant more rainforest plants. All right, let's review. Let's go back to the, the, the directions, right? The first one was write a scientific argument that answers the question, why aren't the jaguars and sloths growing and thriving? Did we address this? Let's see. What about this? We know plants are the food matter sloths need to grow and thrive. So we took care of the sloths. Here's something for the jaguars. If the sloths are healthy, then they are healthy food matter for the jaguars in the rainforest. This is the second part of our directions. Include scientific ideas about what happened to the organisms and to the molecules. Let's see. We know from what we read that all matter is made of molecules. These molecules make up the food animals eat, and animals use these molecules to build and repair their bodies. Okay, we took care of that. And the last point was our audience. Did we write to our audience, the natural res resources rescue well, we did mention them. It says, so let's help natural resources rescue plant more rainforest plants. Do you think we had thoroughly addressed this one last part of our directions? Hmm, maybe we could have spoken directly to them. That's a suggestion. This is one way to communicate the restoration plan because it states a specific action that natural resources rescue could take. It explains why we think the action will work. All right, it's a wrap. Let's review what we have accomplished today. We've learned that food molecules in the ecosystem can always be traced back to plants. We used evidence cards to firm up our scientific argument. And we made an action plan to plant more plants in the reforested area, our project area, and to collect more data to see what happens. Thank you so much for joining me. And I look forward to hearing about how you are gonna continue in this unit Chapter two and chapter three has been done by my friend, Heather, who is a teacher in the Denver Public School District. Bye.